it's me, it's Miss McCarthy, and I'm here to teach you how to pass the math FSA. This is lesson 13, y'all. We've got maths.5, dat, and f.2.3. And today is one of my favorite lessons because I'm going to take something that students normally overcomplicate and bring it back to the basics. It's not that hard, okay? In my opinion. Today is fractions as division. Dun, dun, dun! I know, it's scary, but don't worry. Hang in there, because I'm going to fill you in with a little secret right here, okay? You see this little dude who has a straight face? His little smile looks like a fraction bar, does it not? Say yes. Who said no? <laughs> okay, his face looks like a fraction bar, and this would be my numerator and denominator. I want you to remember that face because really, he's kind of, I don't know the word for it. A little sad maybe, not quite frowny face, but sad. A little, hmm because people don't know his true identity, that a fraction bar is actually the same thing as super division, okay? So remember that. When we have a numerator and a denominator, we are actually using division even though it's in the appearance of a fraction. So you might be like, what are you talking about, Miss McCarthy? I'm gonna teach you, so let's get going now, okay? Say it with me now. Let me teach you. Example one, Edwards. Shout out to you, Edwards, on YouTube. Edwards has a piece of fabric that is five feet long. The fabric needs to be cut into five equal length pieces. How many feet long should each piece of board be? This is where kids are like, what? Okay, let's think about it. We have a piece of fabric that's five feet long and he cuts it into three equal pieces. Didn't I just take something that was five feet long and, sorry, jumping ahead, divide it into three parts and if this, if I'm saying that division can also be used as fractions, that would be five divided by ah, three. So my answer is simply five-thirds. This piece is five-thirds, and this piece is five-thirds, and this piece is five-thirds. And how do I know this works? Because if I add them all up, five-thirds plus five-thirds plus five-thirds equals fifteen-thirds. Fifteen divided by three equals five feet. It works. So each piece is five-thirds of a piece or one and two-thirds. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Don't overcomplicate it. If you are confused, go back and rewatch what I just did. Okay? Example two. Which expression is equivalent to seven twelfths? Ah, I'm scared of fractions. Don't be. Remember, don't overcomplicate it. It's actually pretty simple. Seven twelfths is the same thing as seven divided by twelve. Remember that fraction bar means divided by. We just took 30 seconds to solve this problem. Now it's not 12 divided by 7 because that would be 12 sevenths and that wasn't the fraction that I got. C. 7 divided by 12. Alright, example 3. Enter two consecutive whole numbers that the quotient for 85 divided by 13 is between. Consecutive means one right after the other. So for instance, what comes after one? The consecutive number would be two. And then if you kept counting consecutively, you would say one, two, three, comes right after the other. So fancy word, don't over, don't stress out about it. Okay, so it says enter because you would, you're taking a computerized test and you would enter the two numbers there. Now let's think about it. 85 divided by 13. Okay, it can also be written as this, but it says that I need a whole number and that's a fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down 85 divided by 13. 
and see what my quotient is, okay? So 13 goes into 85, I'm gonna guess about six times, let's see, 18, one, and then six times one will be one, that's 78, that's pretty close, one more 13 would be too high. So, it'd be six. Six times 13 is 78. When I subtract those two numbers, I get seven. So that would be six and seven thirteenths. Okay, so what are the two consecutive whole numbers that this quotient is between? It's between the whole number six and the whole number seven. What? Example four. Create an expression that is equivalent to six thirteenths. Okay, an expression means I don't have an equal sign. So six thirteenths, well this totally means divided by. So it's really just saying six divided by thirteen. So I just take this guy, I put him here, take 13, and I put him here, and I divide him by. This is my smiley face. Okay, bye. Okay, last one. Example five. Mrs. Rogers, everybody say, hey, Mrs. Rogers instructed her students to write a fraction, 12 fifths, to write this as an expression. Zachary, everybody say, hey, Zachary. Zachary wrote the expression five divided by 12. Is Zachary correct? Explain your reasoning. So Zachary wrote five divided by 12. No, he is not correct because to read this fraction, it would be 12 divided by 5. He just flip-flopped the order of the numbers. So here I go with my answer. It's an open response. So you would be typing this, but you're going to write it today. Zachary is incorrect. I don't even think that is correct. That's Spanglish there for you. Zachary is incorrect because 12 fifths should be written as 12 divided by 5. And that's all, folks. See, I told you it wasn't that difficult today, now was it? Okay, so motivational time before I leave you today. The struggle you are in today is helping you develop the strength that you need for tomorrow. Okay, what does this mean? Let's think about it. You might be struggling with some of this how to pass the math FSA content. Maybe you're working through your complete guide and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so much work and I don't understand it and I'm struggling, I'm struggling, I'm struggling. Okay, but you're practicing now. What you're going through right now, any struggle that you're having and you're working through it and you keep trying and you might keep making mistakes, but you keep trying, that's building something in here. That's your character that's building, okay? And that's helping you to be strong here in your heart, here in your mind, so that way when you get to the FSA, you are strong, as strong as you can possibly be entering that test. It doesn't mean you have to get them all right, okay? Don't stress about getting them all right. You just gotta get, get your mind ready, get your heart ready. You're getting prepared for what's coming. And this goes for other areas of your life too. Think about it. Think about something that, you know, you're always either in a struggle, just coming out of a struggle, or just about to enter into a struggle of some kind. So we're constantly building our character, constantly becoming better and stronger human beings if you're doing it right so don't give up don't give in keep going and know that on the other side of your struggle you are going to be a lot stronger and you'll need that strength to get to your next step in life so 
I will catch you guys next time. It's been awesome today with Super Fraction Guy. And um, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye, guys.